Hello and welcome to the Slapdash Amateurs Podcast. This week I am Scott and I am joined by Eric. Hello. And Brandon. Hello. And we are brought to you by Powdered Milk. Oh, has your Hello. family tried that powdered milk? <laughs> Why, yes, they have. Scott, just because you're not Scott what? last week. I, were you only Scott this week or were you not Scott last week or something? Uh, no, last week I was Slapdash Scott. Also, oh, okay. stop pushing your goddamn Canadian milk products on us. We have no, regular this is, this is from Milwaukee. Oh. This is powdered milk. Oh, has your family tried that powdered milk on <laughs> Prairie Home Companion? So do they write the snap out on the bag? Is <laughs> Does it describe the sound of the snap? No, they have, they have a scratch and sniff that gives you the smell of the snap. Why not just open the bag of milk and smell it? <laughs> because it doesn't smell like snap. What are you doing? <laughs> what does snap smell like? <laughs> Come on. Oh my God. I could just sniff it. Buy a jar of Snapple. Each bag of milk <laughs> comes with three Snapple, and it's just the price of Snapple. Hey, uh, no. What? Anyway. Oh boy. Yeah, he's got this week. And Brandon, you stole my goddamn word. Hello, that's my thing. You can't have that. I uh, said hello, though. My head oh, extra was in it. Gotcha. I just couldn't tell because there was no scratch and sniff on your hello. Uh, anyway, but what what are we so excited for this week? I'll tell you what we're so excited for. It's for Powder the Fuck. It's, it's for <laughs> Land of the Lustrous. Land of the Lustrous rocks and shit. I love them. I hear that if you, rocks are pretty good. I hear that if you break down oh, uh, oh, 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 oh I hear that if you break down calcite, you'll get powdered milk because it's calcium. This is a mistake. Yeah. Scott, why do you mention powdered milk? It's like rocks. Because powdered milk. Hey, anyway, yeah, Land of the Lustrous. Hey, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good show, and we're going to talk about it today. Yeah, so it aired on Toonami in 2009. Uh, it was a 13-episode series that was given a second season last year, and that was 12 episodes, so 25 in total. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we watched two of them. Yeah, and it starts out with uh, our champion, um, Red, and he gets his first Pikachu at the gym. And then goes off on his battle. Remember that arc where he like gets kidnapped by the Elite Four, who are all evil for some reason, and then <laughs> yeah. Yellow has to come save him? Like, what the frig was happening? That was my favorite arc. But then he escapes on his pirate ship to find the One Piece. Yeah, but I didn't even make that up. Wait, what? <laughs> I didn't make that up. Are you kidding? This is like this the... Is plot, the plot of Yellow is that Red's gone missing. And it's because the Elite Four are evil, which was established in the Wait. original stuff, and they, they kidnap, uh, or they kidnap, like, all the champions for some reason. Okay, so Satoshi was brought in, Ash was brought <laughs> fuck, I just, <laughs> I just said so... Satoshi instead of Ash. <laughs> oh, no. So he was I don't understand the joke. The joke is that Pokemon... What does Pokemon is... have to do with fucking Land of the Lost Wait, we're talking about Land of the Lost <laughs> When did that happen? I thought this was the Pokemon cast. <laughs> are you serious, though? This is like the start of Yu-Gi-Oh, where the Pharaoh straight up kills him. Yeah, the, the red. There's the red manga, which is all about red becoming Pokemon. Hold, well, hold, on, hold on, Scott. This is America in the fifties. You can't go reading red manga. <laughs> no, right. and then, and then there's the yellow manga, which is the sequel. And red, red's <laughs> gone missing because he was kidnapped by the Elite Four. And like the Elite Four is just evil. And like <laughs> Pikachu shows up, like being the crap out of, and yellow heals him up, and they go searching and stuff. From my perspective, Red is the evil one. Oh, and also, oh my god, I forgot the t- there's the time Oak disguises himself as like a wrestler to fight what? Red in the in the like champ Pokemon battles. It's great. It's me, the Professor, bro. <laughs> I'm here to take you down by beating you with my complete Pokedex. I'm gonna shove Pokeballs in my mouth and eat them. <laughs> I'm gonna get up on the I'll get up on the stage and shove Pokemon down my throat. I'm the Professor. <laughs> Yeah, Land of Lustrous is a show about rocks. <laughs> just, just like Dwayne The Rock Johnson is a professional wrestler. And just like Shigoki no Shoma is a show about cooking. You guys spent five minutes talking about <laughs> fucking Pokemon. It's so interesting. Good, can we can we just switch this to Harry Potter cast? Again? <laughs> yeah, I mean... We, so we all know that the third one's the best, which we've gone over before, because it has the original <laughs> costumes. So the director switches between 1, 2, 3, and 4... It's actually really, really. Uh, you, you can you can tell the immediate shift between one and two and three because it gets less childish, just like in the books. Anyway, we're done yeah. with that. All right. 
should have been done with that five minutes ago. <laughs> Hello, Hamora. I unlocked the podcast. Well, then, then, Brendan, how about you start us off with our first topic today? Uh, so let's talk about CG and why it is not completely terrible like Berserk led us to believe. Oh, boy. Why is that, Brandon? <laughs> so, first, when you start watching Land of the Lustrous, if you compare it to Berserk, you'll notice a big difference. In that it actually looks good, the <laughs> animations are not extremely janky, and when they, uh, when they talk, the lip syncing is in around four seconds off. Yeah, I was actually pretty blown away by how everything actually like looked like one scene. Um, <laughs> you know, like it, they, they did a CG animation where there wasn't some out-of-place drawing in the front. Uh, everything is CG, so everything works together. And plus, the rocks. They're shiny. CG is kind of shiny. So it works. You're not thrown off by yeah, that little bit of shiny. Out, Mary. They're not rocks. They're minerals. Whoops. Hallelujah. In Australia, we call it Marmite. Scott, get it together. <laughs> Those vermits. Oh, boy. Yeah, but the CG in this show, it, it works better than uh, basically any other show that I've ever seen. Uh, partially because AI, I immediately buy into it because that, that slight off-putting sheen of cg makes sense to me because the rocks because everything's cg so the scenes all fit and just because they do a great job with uh directing how the shots look yeah they do a real good job making it look like there's a camera that they're moving around a 3d space rather than just trying to do some adaption or something crappy I still disagree that I don't think it all looks shiny, because if you look at the Lunarians, they really do not look very shiny. I, okay, I, again, I should be using the word, like, Matt, Matt is the one? M-A-T-T-E? Matei? Like, what? What? Oh, yeah. That's it. I don't know. It sounds M M Matei? Mashaya? Mash mash yeah. Kuna Matei? What a, what a terrible sheen. I don't know. Anyway. What terrible day for me. Yeah, like, it's, it's just, like, oddly smooth. But they're minerals, so they're supposed to be smooth. I guess sm smooth is smooth is the way to put it, rather than sheeny. Just because, like, mo a lot of drawn anime... A lot of the old-school drawn anime... As, like, in sharp... Day. <laughs> has, like, sharp edges and outlines, because they want figures to be distinct. But CG is smooth, because it's 3D space. And they've got to fill 3D space and not literally stick stick out where they shouldn't. Whereas when it's flat, you want them to stick out. It's I don't know. It's it's just a difference in um, in what you want the what, what or how you focus the image between CG and drawn animation. I, I think even like if you look at even the uh, so Berserk's animations were actually terrible, but I think if you even look at the still frames and compare them, I think the Lionel Lustrous actually just looks better. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, uh, Zerk's like obsessed with doing lots of shading. Because of course the manga's got lots of intense shading, mm. but it's like all pen, pen and ink type thing. Whereas this, whereas when it's got colors and it's uh, various put together polygons, it looks really crappy, and the shading usually looks like a joke. Whereas this doesn't do that; it looks like a natural light coming off things for the most part. Yeah, pen and ink. I've noticed really, like like, like those intense shading styles don't come across great in most anime that I've seen. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's also... I, I don't think older anime looks very good as well. Uh, screw off go back and, and watch die. It. <laughs> it's, I, I'm not talking about if you go back to the 90s. It doesn't look... Uh, it's still screw off and die. Rate. We gotta go back to, like, <laughs> 70s before I'll stop saying that. I'm gonna agree so with Scott I'll on this one. It. I'm gonna agree with Scott on this one, for the most part. Just, like... Y y you have to have different expectations of what things are going to look like. Like, there's still a great art direction in older anime, but generally they just have like less filled out backgrounds and stuff. Honestly, I really love a lot of the old like character designs and stuff because they just really have a different style that isn't around today. Like, you're not going to get character designs like in Gunbuster that you get at all. Like, cause they just kind of they're not moe, but they've got like, they're, well, they're the classic Moe, where they got sort of, like, these in large size, but they're not just designed to be cute characters, whereas now they'd either be cute characters or serious characters, I think. Right. Probably. But, oh, no, I hope, um, 
all CG in the future takes more after this than, uh... Who did Berserk? It was, uh... Fuck. I could not tell you. Probably gay and dead. Probably, yeah. Is this is Studio Orange that did the CG, yeah? Uh, no, you're thinking of Studio Pomegranate. Whoops. Studio what? Citrus? Cit oh, <laughs> Citrus. I love Studio Citrus. My favorite anime. <laughs> The CG I, and say, I was really happy when Anime Music Quiz, I said my favorite, one of my favorites, you guys both put something gay in Citrus. <laughs> <laughs> we know how much Scott loves gay women. It's a lot. It was hilarious. A very large percentage of love he has towards it. And the Could genre. you say this an Anime Music Quiz podcast? Yeah, sure. <laughs> anime right. Music Quiz is amazing. It's so fucking good. <laughs> Holy shit. I, uh, as you all know, I'm a professional Super Smash Brothers Melee player, and I was in a stream with Whoa. twelve other with twelve other people, and three of them are professional. Yeah, and three. As you make money, I've made like well, I haven't. It's not really made money because I've spent a lot of money, but I have won like like sixty bucks in Melee. All right, so calm down. What did you spend to enter tournaments? Ten, ten to fifteen dollars. Don't get me wrong. I've spent a lot of money on Melee, but I've also so made some. Lost, it's, it's been a net loss. I have lost many it's hundreds of dollars. Yes. But the point is that I was in a, in a stream with people, and three of them were talking about playing anime music quiz. And I actually didn't, we didn't know until, or I didn't know until then, that it pulled all the music from Mal. So <laughs> it, for the entire time, Brandon and I didn't have Mal accounts set up until today. So we just were using all of Scott's anime openings. So good. And he always beat us by like four or five points. So I think we figured out the fair. reason. When we switched to solely what he's watched, he did worse than he <laughs> usually did. <Yeah. laughs> and I was beating him for like half the thing. Oh boy. Yeah, anime music was though, everyone should play it, because then there'll just be more people playing and we can join lobbies more often. I'm gonna mark I'm gonna market that bad boy until the day I die. Also, that people be. that uh, open lobbies and have like two people in, and then when you join, say we don't want people to join, <laughs> you should kill themselves. <laughs> Make a you're, fucking you're just dumb. Lobby. Just make a private lobby if you're gonna do that, man. Yeah, there's literally no reason not to just have other people in if they want to, unless like you have a full party, in yeah. which case private. What if you don't want to dilute your anime pool, huh? All right, then private. <laughs> he is my golden boy. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually come to really like that through Stockholm or something. <laughs> that terrible, terrible voice in the Golden Boy opening. Well, yeah, what, be seeing fair, that over and over again. I forgot Golden Boy's last episode is the original Shirobako. It's so what? It's just about them making anime. It's great. <laughs> Holy shit! And Scott missed Shirobako, which is his like pinnacle show. Yeah, but it was the what second OP or it, was, As, like, it wasn't it was the, the first. Opening, it was, yeah, the first one's like Mashi. But, uh, Every time I feel like I make progress in knowing things in that game, uh, I get I get one or one or two, right for the entire true. twenty in the round. Yeah, and then you then you freaking guess Squid Girl, and then the next game you just can't guess Squid Girl. Huh? I don't have a memory. I have to use that to remember important <laughs> stuff, like what DI to do off of Marth throws and fares. What ReZero isn't and spacing and what How and not ReZero. Times you missed ReZero. <laughs> Ten times more than that. Plenty of times. Doesn't matter. Who cares? It's not my fault. I forget when we go back in time because Scott dies. Every time Scott dies and resets, I forget the ReZero opening. Spe speaking of dying, remember how characters in this show just aren't afraid of dying? Whoops. Because they always come back. <laughs> but to be fair, <laughs> like, they the also show? always die. Oh, <laughs> like, a lot. Yeah, but also, it's not dying, it's Buddhism. <laughs> What's the difference? Like, to be fair, with how few of them there are, and how in the span of, like, a year, they end up losing, like... Four friggin' gem. Yeah, and I almost lose like a ton more. It's called gems. I'm ashamed. Can we but um, can we talk about how they live for hundreds of years and nothing really big happens, and then suddenly Fos decides she wants to do stuff, and in the course of a year, shit hits the fan. After after like three hundred years, Fos is finally you know I'm kind of bored. I, yeah. I think I should do something instead of like has she just been sitting around for three hundred years yeah. doing nothing. Yeah, I think so. But also, like, it perfectly coincides with the the the, the alien boys, the the moon men, fuck the lunarians. <laughs> <laughs> it just perfectly coincides oh. with the lunarians like adapting. And Can we call them changing. alien boys. I call alien, them boy, alien, boy. alien boy, alien boy, alien boy, alien <laughs> boy. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Kakyoin is my favorite alien boy. Oh boy, yeah, but um. 
yeah, they just uh, don't really die. Um, but at the same time, getting caught by the Lunarians is basically death. I mean, they get turned into jewelry. Yeah. And they, they, like, they don't experience memories and shit when they're busted up, right? No, I don't think they're conscious. Yeah, man, like, so they're basically dead when they get captured by the Lunarians. So they're, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so there is they a concept. They can be, like, rebuilt, All right. I believe, because they try to capture. Like, once they um start... You know how they start, like, firing pieces of... Uh, oh, yeah, I know that you can recapture them, and you can put them back together. Yeah. Yeah. But the, another thing, right, is they mentioned, right, that they're actually really just kind of, like... They're basically actually hive minds. They're a bunch of little things living inside of the the stones that yeah. make them up. So, like, what does that mean? I don't like, know, man. Because doesn't... Shouldn't those... Are those independent? Or are they, like... Are they more like cells in the human body where, like, a cell can't live by itself? Or can they, like, sort of just exist on limited memory? Because, like, the ice glaciers have limited, like, co- communability type thing. Fuck the ice glaciers. Anyway. I mean... They uh, might have done that just to kind of justify the uh, whole memory loss when you lose pieces of yourself kind of thing. So right. there might not even be any kind of deeper meaning behind it. So, I mean, I'm thinking at the very least that all the different types of gems have different types of those hive mindy shit. Just because the amethysts are the same, but all the gems are different. To be fair, they're kind of just twins, though. Yeah, but also they call themselves numbers. Like amethyst number blank and blank, so there's like been more of them. I just kind of assume that they all act the same. I th- I, well, I think the numbers refer to like the specifics of the gem. What? You Why don't any other of them? Others have m- numbers then. Because they don't have any others that are two of the same type of gem. Yeah, they only really distinguish between each other. All right. Like if there were like three yellow diamonds, and they, one would be yellow diamond. That's exactly okay. That's what I was saying. Then one would be yellow diamond seventy-two, and one would be yellow diamond four. Yeah. So there have been seventy-six amethysts. No. 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 As in, like, if there were three yellow diamonds, then one would be 79, even though they might have been the first that's, yellow diamond ever. That's because ridiculous. Because the number refers to, like, the gem's properties, not to the number which of... Which property? The, the property of which I number it is? <laughs> this gem properties have numbers? <laughs> you really feel like a 79 kind of person. I'm having a real 43 type of day oh. right now. Wow. I don't think you need to calm down. Have you tried some powdered milk? <laughs> No, well, I know, again. I haven't. I have not tried some powdered well, milk. Snap. Try that powdered milk. Powdered milk, snap, trademark. I hope that shows up well, that snap. I hope it doesn't. I'll make if it doesn't, I'll just insert a snap noise, because I'm editing this week for the first time. Hallelujah. Nice. Uh... Yeah, forgive that poor quality. Yeah, don't worry about it, team. I'm learning. It's going to be about as high quality as the picture from the last podcast <laughs> i hope it's better than the first two takes i think i have a pretty hilarious idea for what to do for the background and i, I think i'm just going to describe it now so you guys finally understand what you're seeing behind your eyes so here's what i'm imagining is that one day brandon read the name of the first episode which is fosso fori fiaito fosso fori raito yeah which reminded me of nose for <laughs> so I'm gonna, <laughs> so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the picture from SpongeBob. I'm gonna take the picture from SpongeBob of Nosferatu when he turns on and off the lights and put Nosferatu. Face over. But, but I'm gonna make it say Nosferatu. <laughs> and, and you're gonna put Foss's face on him. Yep. <laughs> Alternative, <laughs> alternatively, I can make an intro bit and have that be the intro bit and do something else for the picture. No, they should see it throughout the entire thing. Oh. I mean, you two are going to be the only ones seeing it, so. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Between my 20th and 23rd times watching it, I'll really start to appreciate the grandeur. (sighs) Anyway, yeah, uh, Buddhism, though, uh, with the rebirth and shit, is there anything in Buddhism about, like, being taken out of the cycle of reincarnation? Because that's what what happened. Maybe? I mean, th- th- uh, that is kind of like a thing in Hinduism, isn't it, right? Probably. I don't know. Probably? Uh, you just get reincarnated oh. as something worse. All right, There's but... definitely a thing about being taken out of the cycle in one of them somewhere. All right. Jainism, something, who knows? I thought Jainism was just about, like, not hurting things. It's got other stuff. All right. Anyway, uh, let's not offend people anymore. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't yeah, yeah, offend ourselves. Buddhist... All of our Buddhist, all, all the Buddhist watchers. 
<laughs> I apologize to the people who's of different religion who watch us. Oh boy. Yeah, but um CG looks really good. I don't know what to tell you. It's basically just that studio and UFO table that have made CG that I thought looked really good. Oh, who did The Boy and His Beast or whatever? The Beast and the Boy? The Boy and His Beast. Who <laughs> <laughs> did Beauty and the Beast? Wait, the Boy and His Beast suddenly sounds like a real coming-of-age story. Sounds like a real Fooly Cooly type deal. This is ready for Fooly Cooly Season 2. I'm not. Oh, no thanks. Six episode so, series? What were they thinking? What's up, Brennan? So maybe we should go through some of the, like, episodes now. Yeah, sure. And, like, kind of explain a bit more of the basic plot structure. That sounds like a great idea. All right. Go for it. So we got... So first we got uh, when they introduce Fos, and they pretty much flat out... Everyone pretty much flat out says that they don't like Fos throughout the entire thing, and that's fine or annoying. Yeah, everyone's a jerk to Fos. Yeah, at the same time, Fos has been getting in everyone's way and making their jobs and, and lives harder every day for 300 years. <laughs> yeah. But also, they are kind of dicks still. Yeah, Fos, they, like, never, they never uh, seriously punish her. They always just, like, mildly punish her. It's because Fos is too cute to punish. Yeah. Is what it is. Everyone wants her because of her looks. Also, Sensei likes, <laughs> likes her. Yeah, Sensei is definitely into her. Dude, Sensei is such a cradle robber. She's only 300 years old. <laughs> what the hell? Red admins are gonna ban him. Hello, this is the the mineral lease. The mineral law lease. Oh, boy. Yes, yeah, so, that's, so in the weird. first episode, yeah, <laughs> it's just a everyone hates foes type situation. And at the end of it, they bring out Cinnabar. Uh, and Sky will probably want to talk about that. Oh, there's 28 gems at the beginning, they say. That's the thing. Whoops. Really? But, yep. And that's just like a property of the show, is that it has 28 of them? They I just, don't know, I just said, I, that's just in my notes, uh, 28 of them. They said that in the you first count? episode. Did you count? Oh, they said it, okay. <laughs> Did you count uh, the appearances? So I don't even know if that includes Sensei or what. Who knows? I have no uh, idea. Is he even a gem? I have no fucking clue. No, he's definitely not a gem. But the, yeah, then the the end of the episode, which is the the real important part besides just establishing the world, is that freaking Fos goes to see Cinnabar because she thinks maybe she'll get some help with coming up with her encyclopedia that she's supposed to be doing. And Cinnabar then she gets attacked by Lunarians, but Cinnabar saves her, and Cinnabar is pretty upset that Lunarians came for her because no one really knows what to do with Cinnabar, and Cinnabar doesn't know what to do with Cinnabar, and Cinnabar just kind of wants to die because of that. But the Lunarians won't kill her. <laughs> so, her. And then, uh, but they'll kill Fos. But then Fos promises that she'll find something for Cinnabar to do that Cinnabar is the only one that can do to make her feel special. Because she doesn't need a participation trophy, she needs real participation. <laughs> so sidebarring this into a suicide cast, man, that sucks. That she can't kill herself. I mean, I mean doesn't yeah. it suck for us all? Yeah. But like, well, I guess she could just trip and break... Never mind. Well, then someone's going to put it back together. Yeah, it's true. Anyway, yeah, so that promise, I hear it's pretty important to the show. Yeah, the promise is really important because that gives Fos her guidance to, to do things. Yeah. Because she, she doesn't really want to do an uh, encyclopedia. She's supposed to do an encyclopedia, but she wants to do something. And she thinks by helping Cinnabar, maybe she can do something that's actually important for her to do. But she sucks at it. Let's take a step back to think about what it means that, like, Sensei assigned her to write an encyclopedia. Go, go around and, and write about everything that you see, and maybe that'll yeah, keep you really occupied for a while. Off. Yeah. Yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> he did want her to just... She was getting everyone's way, so he just decided to give her something useless to do, yep. so she would stop bothering them. Yeah, basically. Like, <laughs> they don't need that fucking encyclopedia. Everyone knows they're the important information, and Fos doesn't know anything special. Yes. Anyway. Also, be fair. She was really terrible at the encyclopedia. She's so bad. She didn't even try. That's what made. That's what made me so mad at the beginning was that she literally like barely even tried. She put all her work into not doing, or all her effort into not doing it. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Elegant, refined, useless. But then we're introduced to Diamond, and it all doesn't matter because Diamond is cuter than Fos, and therefore we stop paying attention to Fos. Yeah, but time. What the hell? When did he change your opinion on this? <laughs> yeah, what? I, I have Diamond is acute more times than Fos is acute. 
Yeah, but also, who cares? It's about what's on the inside that counts. And diamond? Who cares? It's made of diamonds. Diamonds made of fucking diamonds. I take it <laughs> If You can just put a metal band on her and it's the biggest wedding ring ever. Also, side note, the, the island is shaped like a crescent moon. That's definitely something. This They are on the moon. This was all the moon all along. Oh my, and the, the, earth, the alien boys are earth people instead. <laughs> <laughs> they were the alien boys all along. The rocks were the alien boys. Life found on Mars. Kawaii. Is there life on Mars? <laughs> but for real, the, the life that we found on Mars, it's just these hive mind shit. We've true. uncovered we've uncovered uncovered the truth. The Japanese want to use the hive minds to make children for their economy. <laughs> it all comes back to this in the end. All according to Kaikaku translators note Kaikaku means Kaikaku. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so Diamond's introduced and I forget why that matters cuz who cares? All the gems are She's what upset that is... she's upset that she's no good next to Bort. And she wants to be better, so she keeps pushing herself harder, but it doesn't matter, because she's so much far worse than Bort. Oh, it's like in Haikyuu, how Hinata keeps pushing himself because he's so short, uh, so he just gets his vertical jump height up a bunch. Yeah, uh, but he can change, because it's a shonen, or is in this, where it doesn't yeah. do shonen stuff. That's uh, true. She just stays a failure. She can't change because she's a rock and also a failure. Well, to be fair, Diamond is pretty much the second strongest of... Is it? Is she the second or third? Is Yellow Diamond more useful? Uh, I mean, Yellow Diamond does replace her, so I'd say yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but so they have... Uh, and so that would make her at least like in the top three of useful gems. So think about what everyone <laughs> else is like. I'm the third strongest gem. <laughs> I'm between the second and fourth strongest masters. You guys don't play Earthbound, never mind. Anyway, yeah. Um, but also, who cares? Because the Mohs scale doesn't mean anything. It's the toughness scale that matters, because that's how that that determines when you break. Yeah, no, the Mohs scale she, totally means something. It's just, it's just like it's so much less important. They're kind of distinguishing between a diamond and a better diamond. Like Mohs scale is so much less important than toughness, because toughness is when you break, and Mohs scale is just how hard you are. The toughness in your heart, and <laughs> they don't have hearts, so they have none. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the snail snail lady has a heart. Except she really doesn't. Has a heart and big boobs. That's yep. and that's that's a great segue into the introduction of the snail. Yeah, fuck the snail. <laughs> oh, also, the, the snail does bring up a very interesting point, which is that uh, something that we have kind of neglected is that all these gems are gender neutral, and we'll talk about that later. But the snail refers to Sensei as as a man. Ooh, that's because he looks like a fucking. Guy. Yeah, it is. But also, the rest of them look like women, and you're just supposed to say that they're not. Anyway, uh, ooh, maybe that's important. I don't know. He's not a gem. We figured it out. Yeah, he isn't a gem. We got it. <laughs> yep. And also, the snail is a piece of crap and pretends <laughs> to be false for a while for no reason. Yeah, that's really... <laughs> Why did that happen? Well, he basically... So, the snail introduction is uh, basically thrown by the Lunarians and then proceeds to eat Fos. And then, basically, what, uh... Was it Bort who, uh killed him or not killed it but well they basically uh, beat the snail so. they just pushed it into the water right yeah they, they broke his yeah. shell open somewhat yeah and then and then so diamond finds the uh, little snail and then it's just pretending to be fos for like an entire episode and then uh diamond goes around trying to find people who can try oh, to help all of a sudden, her there's, there's some real great moments of her bringing it to people and be like this is fos and they're like have you slept lately <laughs> 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 Oh boy, what an improvement. But basically, so in the first episode, they kind of showed that everyone thinks Fos is really annoying. But apparently they all hate her because she literally basically dies. <laughs> and then Diamond is the only one who even remotely cares. My, Fos, such shiny antennae you have. The better for snailing you with, my dear. <laughs> yeah, but it's really weird because they all kind of think that it's better that she's a snail. Yeah, because they're, it's they're assholes. It's, it's pretty fucked yeah, up. And then Taya, because she's depressed, wants to be a snail. Rip. Poodoo, 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 dee, nee. <laughs> <laughs> but, Ooh. Ooh. Oh, God. Ooh. 
Oh, yeah, so that I'm, happens. I'm scared to watch Fate Extra because of the Umu. Oh, is that a Fate Extra thing? I was going with... Yeah. That's, that's Nero. Yeah, you were doing... Umu. I was NHK. I mean, yeah, I was I was NHK. That's there. not opening music, op- opening that Moe. It might be on the music quiz. Oh. I'm excited to win the next time we play, by which I mean get 4 out of 20. <laughs> a new record. Yeah, anyway, well, then, that happens. Then in the next episode, you kind of get the first introduction of kind of plot and sewing more to the settings on this there's a bunch of gay rocks around when the uh snail basically tricks Fos and uh coming deep in the ocean and then you kind of this is when it first shows so basically tricks her then the lunarians come down and she tries to trade Fos for uh her brother i believe yep 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 and so it they works. do that and then it, this is when it first kind of shows that the lunarians are actually sentient because before this, you, they were kind of just a bunch of mindless. Give me your yeah, demos. Uh, basically really clear, even if like those, if those were like being controlled by like the big lunarian or what's going on. Yeah, yeah. But so they go through this whole train, and then they kind of give you a first bit of exposition on uh, what the thing is, and it's basically that, basically uh, they're kind of the descendants of original humans that were divided into body, which were. Apparently snails, <laughs> uh, bones, which were rocks, and then souls, which are the Lunarians. And then it has basically been that uh, the Lunarians, so the souls, basically captured the entirety of all the snail people. And snail then now they're people, kind of going people. for the rocks. Look like bones are snails. I, I think this might be the main reason that uh, we don't actually know how recently all the snails were taking over, but there's a right. good chance they kind of explain that the Lunarians' attacks have gotten like a lot more frequent and deadly at this point. Okay. So it might so be that the up to then they were kind of focusing on the snails, and then once they finished that after, like I don't know, 3,000 years or whatever... They decide to move on to fully onto the rocks. Hey, that's a wonderful headcanon that makes this make sense. Side note: the second snail is like the most derp thing ever. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> and then he becomes really edgy and dope. Yeah, yeah, and then they're clearly voiced <laughs> by a woman, but they're trying to be a man. I don't know. I don't know what was up with that. And they never they show up have. again. I'm okay with them never well. showing up again. At the... They only had one male voice actor. Don't be too hard on him. <laughs> On the bright side, at least he gives us stockings. Oh yeah, he he does give us stockings. Yeah. And also... Which I cover up later, what the fuck? What are they thinking? Also, what kind of job are you going to find for Cinnabar in the middle of the ocean? <laughs> like, no, there, there was someone that lived there who was like them, who might know a job. Oh. Because I know a guy who hey, knows a guy. That's you can pick up was. kelp in the ocean. Oh, you can't? Because you're a gem and you can't live down here? Oh, I guess that's right. Never mind. Get out of my ocean. No one ever accused Fosa, accused Fosa of being smart. Yeah, that's fair. She's definitely not good at things, which is an established point, such as thinking. I mean, after 300 years, she managed to remain completely useless. Oh, oh yeah, that was her 300th dedication. birthday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's, like birthday, the Fos. she's like the time stratum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, yeah. Uh, ne- next episode, she gets her stockings because her legs break. Yep. Hey, Fos loses her legs, and those lose memories and shit. <laughs> oh, also, this show, uh, it's about Fos' growth mainly. That's the big theme going through it. It's Fos <laughs> developing from being useless to having a role and getting strong. And there's a, there's a, there's a Actually, pretty... Actually, she cut her legs the same episode. Whoops. <laughs> My bad. She got him. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, but um, there's, a, there's a big theme of, uh, of sacrifice for strength or, like, price of power type deals. Uh, and obviously for the gems, you can, for, for someone like Fos, who's a weak gem, she can replace her bits with stronger bits, um, <laughs> but then she loses her memories. So she loses her legs and gets fast boy legs, uh, with stockings on them, so you can tell it to go extra fast, because it looks like a racing flag. Um, but like, she, like, you lose some of your personality, because you lose your memory, and that's, I don't know, you lose something when you try to get stronger, I guess. So I, would, I would take it as more of a she wants to be mature, but she has, doesn't really know what that means, and she sees that she can get strong by 
she's trying to get strong by cheating, essentially, is what it's saying. She's just doing, she wants to go find a job quick, easy in the ocean, run and done, 10 minutes. Uh, and then, like, later, she's willing to sacrifice, she's almost willing to sacrifice her arms because it'll just, it should, it'll work out. She'll get something easy, they'll help her, and she'll be better, type thing. And it's saying, well, you, that's not really maturing, that's just, it doesn't work. That's probably a better understanding. But. Uh, I won. Shit. Fuck. Looks like I'm the mature oh, one now. Flashback. Flashbacks to Tree. Fuck. Shit. Oh yeah, Tree. God damn it. Fuck. So there's this character in this called Tree, and there's this character called Eric. And Tree beats up Eric. It's really non sequitur, but whatever. And Tree wears a fucking scarf indoors. And, oh, yeah. tree, and Tree, after beating me, says, wow, you've gotten a lot better. Fuck you, Tree. I'll kill you. Next time. So if anyone knows someone named Tree, make sure to send this to them. Fuck Trees. <laughs> When I eventually spread this to the Melee community and everyone loves my anime podcast, <laughs> the rage will come out. They'll learn the beef. Anyway. Yeah, but uh, but sidebar, yeah, this show, it's it's mainly about Fos' development. Yeah, and Fos forgets Jade, and Jade was one of the only ones that was sort of nice to her. Yeah. Rip Jade. Jade's so cool. I love Jade. Oh, Jade trying to wake up Sensei is so good. <laughs> Sensei, sensei, sensei okay. smashes her hand on him and just breaks. <laughs> she just screams. Oh boy! It, it seems like Sensei is always asleep at like the worst times during this. Yeah, because they basically show that he's able to one shot literally everything. Right. And then whenever something dangerous shows up, he's just like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna be asleep." <laughs> it's almost like he's colluding with them. But, I, no one wakes. Uh... No one tries to wake him up though. And he's always like, "Why? Why did no one try to wake me up?" Because they'll break him. Or he'll break them, I mean. Yeah, he'll break bread. They call it the breaker. <laughs> <laughs> he'll break bread with the enemy. What? But no matter how many gems he sent to wake him up, he'll break which gems come to wake him up. This but, show's about so, DMX. Don't break me down, Bruce. So once Fos gets her stockings, you meet the best characters, the, the Amethysts. Oh, I don't know about that. They are adorable. What is wrong with yeah, you? Yeah, first she goes, she goes, she can't use the legs, and she goes running in this yellow diamond. She's also pretty great. She doesn't really do anything the entire series. Yeah, she, she just kind of, she catches both of them. Is, she has a lot of every, good jokes with uh, Rutilite. Yeah, oh my god, I love the yellow diamond Rutile jokes. Those are great. But yellow diamond's whole thing is every partner uh, she has has basically died. Hey, can we sidebar to the comedy after this? <laughs> sure. Oh my god, fine. <laughs> Sorry, you can talk about the Rutile partners, but I just, I'm no, laughing at it. It's partners, it's Yellow Diamond yeah, whatever. partners. And then so she kind of feels like she's been the one kind of holding all her partners back because they basically all died sacrificing for her, and that's kind of what happens to Fos several times over this when you get to, uh, well, <laughs> when you get to the next episode at least. Yeah, Fos' so, partners don't have a good oh, track history. It's the episode after the next episode. What are you yeah. doing? It's episode eight. <laughs> yeah, but definitely uh, Fos is, 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 pretty, is pretty much a, a death flag. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. yeah, so sidebar to comedy, this show is pretty fucking hilarious. It's yeah. got such a great understanding of comedic timing. The Rutile Yellow Diamond jokes, where Rutile makes some a subtle comments about Yellow Diamond being old, and then it waits that perfect second of silence and then cuts... To Yellow Diamond chasing her, saying, "What the fuck are you saying to me, bitch?" <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it understands just... comedic timing better than most shows. Yeah, and like there's a real consistent thing of like Sensei being talking about something kind of boring and serious, and just something really funny happening in the background, like this Fos fighting, uh, what's her face, what the snail with a chair. <laughs> and later on, there's like when Fos has changed, like Sensei's talking, and everyone's just trying to touch Fos's arms. And, like, Fos is trying to get away from everyone. Right. Like, they do a great job of gag comedy, because most anime humor is usually, like, st straight man, funny situation happens and straight man says, what the hell's happening, what? Or it's puns, because the Japanese love puns. Yeah. And they translate really poorly. Yeah. So this is pretty refreshing. Sakura Khan <laughs> That's actually my favorite anime opening, the Sakura Khan 2000. <laughs> I like the Sakura Khan 2013 remake, Sakura Khan Part 2, <laughs> Electric Boogaloo. 
Oh boy, it's a great series. Yeah. Anyway, second sidebar, because uh, we talked a lot about some of the some of the side character or some of the side characters and how they have like actual like personalities and story. This show has a big cast, and I think it handles that really well. Um, it introduces them all at the beginning, which I mean, yeah, whatever. It introduces them all at the beginning, and then over the course of the show, you learn more about each of the gems and why they're special. Because at first, they all kind of seem samey. Um, and then we learn about what they all do and why they do it and their struggles. I don't know. It it, it, it does a good job of um, showing, not telling, and slowly piecing you in on what everybody Making does. you want to collect them all Pokemon. Yeah, I definitely want to collect all my stories of the gems. You can get a badge by just chipping off a piece. Anyway. Wait a second. These are Pokemon and their Pokemon badges in the same thing. <laughs> Twice oh, the value. Oh boy, so what what were you on, episode 6? Yeah, let's just get, uh, so after this we get, it goes into winter, and uh, basically it says that Fos has kind of always been the first one to go to sleep, and then wakes up later than everyone, and then, uh, and then she's like, so Fos at this point has started to not want to be useless, whereas throughout the entire thing, like, past 300 years, she's basically been doing nothing. <laughs> And then so she decides that she doesn't want to uh, just sleep over winter and decides to um, basically stay up and help in Tardisite. Wait a second. Fos is like a 20-year-old person who spends all day watching anime and realizes their life is pointless and wants to change? Oh, yes, really? but then blah, blah, unlike blah. in real life, she actually changes. <laughs> <laughs> also, wow. you get to see diet in her sleepwear, and it's the best. Yeah, it's, it's, the sleep scene, sleep sleep situation is pretty odd because they just instead of like putting one blanket over themselves, cover the entire room <laughs> in a giant blanket, and also wear blankets over themselves. Uh, uh, I don't see anything wrong. They right. get cold, Eric. They're only rocks. <laughs> <laughs> They're only rocks without senses of touch. Yeah. Whoops. And then there's the crystal rock made of water. And, oh, Antarctica. Is the best. Is the worst. Is the best. I would agree with is Scott. The worst. Is the best. Worst. What a what a How solid. How do you strong. like Antarctosite but not like Dio? What is wrong with you? Because Antarctosite Antarctosite is solitary, has an important job that no one else does. Uh, that's vital to the survival of everyone. They're underappreciated, uh, and so I appreciate them because I'm a dirty fucking hipster. And then freaking Fos. Why? Here's a question. Anthars and Anthars going to break some rocks. He's walking along, and Fos is following. And like Fos is having a hard time because it's cold and there's no light. And he's walking a straight path. Fos is going this zigzag yep. path. Why not just walk Follow. in the path behind him? It's so much easier. But he's literally carving a path. <laughs> and maybe so mad. Yeah, it'll be so much no, easier. That'd be cheating. Fos wants to do it himself. Oh boy. Anyway, yeah, but uh, winter is, is the best part of the show on account of uh, all the gems are asleep, and folks suddenly has a lot of responsibility, and it's great. To be fair, her responsibility kind of goes to clearing ice and killing like two Lenarians. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah but that's a pretty big deal. Which she she's got to do it alone. Fails. Yeah, but also she kind of fucks everything up for both her and her partner most of the time, and then in winter. Uh, she does not, doesn't have the, up even more. Yeah, but yeah, okay. So spoilers: Antarctosite die. It gets captured by the Lunarians because yeah, uh, and then Fos has to take over Winter, and it's great. And she has rapid development because of the trauma from losing Antarctosite, which is her fault. And she gets alloy arms, so she's now strong and shit. And they're she's slower, but she's slow. Well, yeah, so she basically doesn't have the fun legs anymore. So and they cover them up. Yeah, why the f they literally powder up the stockings. Like, no the reason. more I think about it, the more I hate Antarctosite. <laughs> like, everything good about Fos is ruined by him. What are you talking you know, about? You know what I kind of thought was really kind of stupid about the whole alloy hard, thing? But... What? So, so they actually found, like, a, they found a ton of different types of gems there, right? And like, hey, let's take this really weird gold alloy and try to put it on you. Yeah, Where, that was pretty odd. And then later, like, when the, uh, in the Papadasha episode, like, oh yeah, I found a shit ton of ruby. Like, why didn't she try to do anything with the ruby? Because the ruby would be rejected because it's too good. 
but the alloy would work. Yeah, the alloy is easy. L- like even in Tardis, Tardisite and uh, Foes were like, "Wow, using alloy is kind of a retarded idea. Let's do it anyway." <laughs> Everyone knows that you can only r- repopulate yourself with weaker material than your own. <laughs> then how'd she get the fucking legs? Uh, because I lied. <laughs> I don't know, Brandon. The alloy is cool because it's 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 a special ability. It's a Hisatsu golden alloy. It's and a it works. fruit. It's a devil fruit, yeah. She gets the alloy alloy fruit. So we kind of skipped over Fos losing his arms. Oh, uh, did we? Yeah. <laughs> yep. right. they, they fall in the water. Well, the, the, the first is ice talking to them that they can understand for some reason. Yeah, and they fall call- in the water. Okay, yeah. but real quick. So once I heard Sensei call these ice flows sinners... And I never could quite forget that. And that's it. Yeah, they never explained <laughs> yeah, they That's all we get about the ice flows. <laughs> God. Oh, boy. Yeah, I bet Tree's a fucking ice flow. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck that guy. I hope he gets broken up. Anyway, yeah. I invite Tree to do the podcast with us. I, he, I hear he's better at Melee than Eric. He yeah. might be a better podcast partner. I don't think that's how it works. I hear he's cold and soulless, actually. I hear he kicks puppies. I hear the... When folks fall in the water, they do a nice leg straight up, and they look like they're in Ava. Yeah, that is that's true. Yeah, the the ice flows of all also in this scene show themselves to be total dicks because they're basically actively trying to uh, kind of break off her arms and kill her. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, the ice flows but are kind of dicks. They never really uh, explain if it's actually the ice flows talking or she's just going kind of insane. Because they kind of know things like uh, no think that they shouldn't. Because when um, Antarctite was talking with Sensei about how Fos is useless and you know their arms, they'd be better off if their arms worked too. And then the ice flows kind of start talking like that to try to Brand- lure them into the water. Brandon, they explain it as the ice flows reflect your own anxieties, which doesn't make sense. But they, they also say the that the ice flows just like are disturbing, but they can't actually understand them. And the folks is like, "But I can understand them perfectly." And they're like, "Oh, that's interesting." Yeah. Next, <laughs> yeah. So folks, what do you do? So folks can kind of just like talk to everything on account of I guess it's because she was weak once, so she has sympathy or some shit. I don't know. Like she can just kind of understand things for no reason other than that she has had nothing to do. You know, maybe she was the perfect person to make that encyclopedia. I guess, yeah. Yeah, just ask a bug, what are you? Oh, <laughs> uh, bug. Oh, perfect, I'll write that down. Bug. But so, Fos basically loses her arms to the ice flows, and Tardisite jumps in, saves her, pulls her out, and then Fos has lost, at this point, both her legs and arms. Hey, that's like a lot of memories to not have. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that gets brought up pretty... Uh, once winter's over, pretty much, too. Yeah. Here's a question. Why does Fos pretend not to remember Cinnabar? <laughs> Lamau. Nah, it's like she doesn't remember at first, but then remembers or something. I, I don't, don't think she remembered. I think she just pretended to remember. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's explained. I, 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 that was actually a rhetorical question. The whole point is that she doesn't want to go see her, so she pretends not to remember. So oh. she gets out to see her. Gotcha. Oh. And it's kind of dumb still. Gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, but the best bit of the show is when everyone's like, holy shit, Fos, you're super strong and cool now. And she's like, get away from me. Well, so they get, so let's stay a bit in order here. So she gets the alloy on her arms, and then uh, it basically doesn't work and screws her over. And then in Tardisite, beats the Lunarian, and then another one just comes and kills her. <laughs> and then so then in Tardisite dies, gets taken away, and the Lunarians don't notice... This giant uh, block of moving golden alloy, and just kind of leave. What are you talking about? They notice it and go up to it. Yeah, a couple like come over and poke it. Yeah, and then they're and like the they're hands. Just, the, oh, the hands look so cool, covering up Fos's face. Yeah, but they just leave without doing anything about it. No, yeah, that's when Fos like pops out and beats the crap out. Yeah, but not enough. No, they jumped out way too. They started leaving. Then Fos jumped out like, "Wow, I can!" And then tries to. Uh, Save it, Tardis. Hey, why are why are we taking so long to go over a synopsis of the plot? So what is this? That's like nine percent of the content. Eric. What is this? A book report? <laughs> so, so you go over the synopsis, then you explain you how it over, changes like, the a bunch of synopsis already. It's pretty boring. 
pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty I'm done with synopsis. Yeah, so winter ends, and everyone's like, folks, you're so cool and shit, and she's like, yeah, I know. Get away from me, and that's the coolest part. And she's like, I have to find Jon Snow, and we're <laughs> gonna get rid of the Westerosians. Yeah. Oh. And then... And get, yeah. She becomes really interested in Lunarians after the dog and how they're connected with Sensei. Yeah, oh yeah, the dog. The dog's so cool. So this, this big freaking dog shows up, and first of all, like, it tearing through space was really cool. Like, it's, it's just ripping through, like, the hand from Jojo. So this was actually a Jojo <laughs> reference all along. And then friggin' the fight, and diamonds run around, and it's one long shot, and it's so cool. It's very good, yes. What a world. Exactly. Sugoi. Yeah. Sasuga, Sushi, Sasuga. <laughs> but yeah, first realizes that she knows as little as we, the viewers, do about this world, and finally starts asking questions. And then, uh, suspects Sensei as having, knowing about the Lunarians, and then... Last episode, uh, that's when you get the last part with Cinnabar when he goes and asks her to uh, basically help him with something, and then he's like, but, so, they did start with, uh, Fos wanted to find a job for Cinnabar, that would be more fun than what they did, and then the job she came up with turned out to not be any more fun, and so Cinnabar was kind of mad about that. Yep, but the show failed, yep, Fos is a failure, what's new? And then uh, the episode, or the, then that's pretty much the end, isn't it? Yeah, that's the end. Yeah. What a tragedy. Fos like goes and sees, gets called by Sensei and goes to see Sensei, and then there's like some birds, and that's like it. Yep. So basically, there's going to be a big final showdown, believe it, between Fos and Sensei, where the Rasengan like and the Chidori, 20 years. in 20 years... I mean, one of the interesting things I thought was about this is how, uh, when he mentions, you know, isn't it kind of strange how Sensei is connected to the Lunarians? And it's like, because it's and a then dog. He basically said that no, everyone else. She said that to one of the uh, other rocks, and then so um, then he says, oh yeah, we knew that. Everyone kind of has gone through that and known it, and then they, we all just decide to trust Sensei. So it's basically like because because Fos is the youngest one, so it's kind of. Slightly implied that every other one, Gem has gone through a kind of um, similar progression as Fos has, learning about more about the world and then questioning it. Right. And the moral of the story is trust the system, submit to the government, pay your taxes. Yeah, you well, don't. We, we forgot about. You don't need Pat, that sword or gun. <laughs> forgot about Pat Pradasha. Oh, how could we forget about Pat Pradasha? Maybe because <laughs> she forgets about herself, <laughs> and no one cares because she's useless. Wow, what a bad character. Good hair, bad character. I think you just hate all the good characters. Hey, Eric. why don't they just move some of her hair and... onto her body? Huh? Why don't they just do that? <laughs> Why don't I just fill the hole with her hair? Because that goes all the way to her fucking feet. Fos actually did that. Yeah, but why, why, does, uh, why is it that like none of the, the other ones have a problem where if they replace something, it, after a while they just won't accept it anymore? Like, what? I don't know. <laughs> Pepper Dash is just a, a fucking mess. I don't know what they were thinking. So, this, uh... So the anime was based off a manga that I think looks... Much, much worse than the anime did. <laughs> it's probably because it looks much, much worse than the anime did. <laughs> there's, it's, there's a lot of heart in it, you can tell. Not a lot of, not as much skill as heart, but... <laughs> the character designs kind of look really... Bad? Kind of. Not not bad, per se. That, I think that's too much, but yeah. they look much worse. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. They're just kind of blobby and not that interesting. Yeah, and they all they all look exactly the same. Besides yeah. for the hair. Well, that's racist. Let's go now. <laughs> trying to say that all rocks look the same, Brandon? Yes. Wow. Yeah, but so the one of the big differences in adaptation manga to anime though is uh, the rocks are all supposed to be a gender. They definitely push them towards looking feminine for the anime to market to us, us rock loving uh, eighteen to twenty. And they got us. They got us good. not see this coming? They got us good. They can't keep getting away with this. Oh, they that rocked my socks, if you know what I mean. Bought up a Dewey. Oh, the phrase has got my rocks off. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> what can you do? Anyway, yeah, I mean, it's it seems like that was the obvious intention there, was just to make it more marketable. Um, 
And Scott, I think you had said something about this author's other series uh, being interested in, like, agender and trans stuff. Yeah, they did, they did other stuff. They've done other stuff that's, like, gay and stuff. Yeah, so it's something the author cares about. <laughs> you know, I don't have anything to say on this this time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's something the author cares about, but that wasn't really deemed important to the understanding of the show. Other than that, there's I mean, like it, 30... it does help for one thing, which is like it can it allows Fos's transformation to be more dramatic. Yeah, because right? their character design in the manga is kind of blobby, so changing from one blob to another blob <laughs> is that exciting. Whereas here, it's more obvious. You got a full Magic Girl transformation sequence. I feel like it makes it come off much more as Sensei just has this creepy harem of feminine rock boys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but come on. Instead- we all want to be that sensei, though. Come on. I don't. I don't think that was the intention of the manga, though. It probably was not the intention to form it's a like, rock harem. Fos looks a lot more masculine in the um, manga, and I. I feel like he also starts looking a lot more masculine at the end of the anime when he cuts his hair and is the only oh, yeah. one still wearing pants. Yeah. That's it. Anyway. Yeah. So. Other than that, I don't think any of us have read the manga. It's not a lot to say there. I read part of it. Gotcha. Uh, so the I ad- literally I've, I've read one chapter. episode after uh, the or one episode, like one chapter after the final thing, they introduce a new character. Oh, oh no! And it basically cock blocks the uh, progression between Cinnabar and uh, Fos. But I love Bleach. Give me more characters, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, oh, these character designs are so great. I wish they just keep drawing them forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I want to go back. Take me back. <laughs> you remember uh, uh, was a high school boy in the year two thousand seven. I highly recommend Bleach. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a wonderful show for middle school. Oh, boy. Anyway, well, that's well, um. Let's just not around. <laughs> I miss endless Jess. What a guy. I, sometimes I think about Kermit the Frog and if he would be proud of me. Yeah, but so the, 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 the anime ad, adapts like 40 chapters of the manga and there's 30 more out right now. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so it's almost enough for a season two. I want to. Fair, I think they should kind of avoid introducing too many more characters. That would be great. Because they haven't personified, like, half of the ones they've already introduced. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a big problem. <laughs> I would like some more explanation as to what some of them do. And are like. Because at the beginning of the show, they're literally all just Fos hating and the same. You can't blame them. Fos is pretty hateable. That's true. If but, you have but also... there for 300 years annoying you and is basically daddy's favorite, <laughs> but also you're going to is... get kind of annoyed. <laughs> At the same time, Fos is the only one doing anything somewhat interesting, because the rest of them do the same thing every day. <laughs> yeah, they have a very stresses. terrible plan, oh. <laughs> and they keep going with it. Like, to send out people, groups two by two to face a uh, friggin' enemy until... Oh my god. So, so they why do they patrol the giant field of nothingness in in groups of two, instead of just like... Roaming as a group to get rid of the Lunarians when they show up. They have to protect their precious supplies of paper and whatever those flowers are and the shit that lets them go underwater. <laughs> what if they lost the shit that lets them go underwater so they couldn't Why go into they the ocean? throw that shit close to <laughs> the place? Brandon, don't you know there are precious jobs in the ocean that they can't afford to lose to foreign markets? <laughs> the Lunarians are coming and taking all their ocean jobs. <laughs> oh boy. Oh my god. Yeah, there's no reason. It's, they don't need this face. They don't need to eat. They don't need anything. They, like, the Lunarians eventually come to the building that they're in. They could just all stay in the building together and beat the Lunarians <laughs> just as a group. Just have Boyd or Sensei just kill it. Like, yeah, exactly. and have no threat. <laughs> like, it's like, they also say how many they've lost. It's like, and they even, so it's just recently that the Lunarians stopped being, like, completely useless at actually firing things that could hurt. Most of them, like the gem-tipped arrows. Yeah. And then they lost some before that. It's like, how? <laughs> right. Like, half of them can, like, leap 50 stories. Probably. Wow, this cliff 
and over here at sunset sure is beautiful. I'm going to fall asleep and cover myself with a blanket so that I don't wake up. Oh, so, <laughs> sen Sensei's picking me up to take me on a magical flying carpet ride. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> wow, is that is that Mars down there? Oh, guess I'm gone. Oh, boy. Yeah, but uh, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. There's a lot of questions in this world that aren't answered and that I feel are there just to make us feel like we don't them. understand and question them, yeah. Because you can't have a big mystery world if everything makes sense. <laughs> Whoops. That's true. Yeah, but the you can't... Dark keep... continent. Go. What? Scott, we're not actually in America in the 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> I was lying way back then. Before <laughs> the nineteen fifties. Of course it's not. Then we'd have in the more powdered milk. And oh boy. Good enough. Anyway. I mean, yeah, the world a lot of holes. Doesn't really make a whole ton of sense. But I'm willing to look past it's that. Almost good as many holes as uh Papa <laughs> the Sailor Man, that's right. I love Papa the Sailor Man. It's too bad that Rutile can't fix him. Oh boy. Anyway, personally, uh, I had a big gap in interest, or a big difference in interest in the show from episodes 1 to 6 and 7 through 12, because as soon as they started the winter arc, as soon as they started the winter arc, I was fully on board and into it, whereas 1 to 6, it was I, it was just kind of okay. I mean, I really liked the starting episode, but most of the character progression does happen pretty much during the winter arc. Yeah. And then after that, so that's probably why you liked it a lot more. That is, that is the why. plot kind of goes from being at a complete standstill to progressing in right. that time period as well. Now that I've seen the full thing and looked back, I have a greater appreciation for the comedy, for the for the introductions that they, that they do at the start. Um, but yeah, definitely plot-wise and development-wise, the beginning is very slow. And they introduced the best character, Daya. I don't, I don't get it, guys. I don't you're get it. Gay. I don't get I it. I agree with Scott. You're gay. I don't understand. You actually like the only masculine character in And Darkusite's so cool. More That's pretty than gay. The, more than <laughs> the girliest, cutest <laughs> Oh, boy. Phos is also pretty great. So I guess I'm two for two on the yeah. masculine ones. What can you do? <laughs> Your next favorite sensei. Nah, it's, it's Rutile, man. <laughs> Rutile's great. And then Cinnabar? Oh, boy. Yeah, there are some great character designs, because unlike in the manga, they don't all look blobby in the same. Yeah, and unlike a Polygon Pictures anime, they don't all look like friggin' the same people. The manga really... the art really didn't improve. <laughs> like, like when you read One Punch Man... It gets better. One, it gets a lot better, the same with Mob Psycho, but it's kind of... Land of Lust just is kind of... keeps the same kind of quality throughout the entire thing. Disclaimer, drawing is hard, and we can't do it, so it's good enough, but... Never mind, it got worse, now that I look at it. Whoops. <laughs> Go look at uh, chapter one, and then look at the final chapter, <laughs> and it looks a lot worse. At least it's not Hunter Hunter. Why do you say Hunter Hunter again? Scott, how dare Hunter you? Hunter x Hunter. You gotta, you gotta stop on. this. At least it's not Hunter x Hunter. Thank you. You got, like, the X's there. You gotta say it. Oh boy! Yeah, yeah, that doesn't really look all that good there. At they the put, end, they put the goddamn X in the middle of it. I'm gonna say the X. Yeah. Oh boy. Speaking of which, Arrested Development gets a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> Season four. What were they thinking? I don't know. What, uh, I don't yes, know what they were thinking. My favorite anime, Arrested yeah. Development. Michael San gets so unlikable at the end. George yeah. Michael Kuhn is the only one. I agree, one. The Office in the end was not very good. <laughs> yeah, hey, it turns out real offices aren't fun and zany like in The Office. <laughs> what the freak? They're just bored. Anyway, I'm done with that. Yeah, rocks, they're cool. They're good. Uh, what else do we uh, have to go over? Uh, personally, like, I, 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 I love uh, trauma bits and getting over trauma bits in anime and manga. So that's another reason why that winter arc and then transitioning into the spring arc were so enjoyable for me was because we got that rapid development from Fos. Uh, yes, I too am a sociopath. Change. I, love when people, <laughs> I love it when people get tortured in anime or manga. It is my favorite thing. In Tokyo Ghoul, that got, that got my rocks off. It was the best part. That's a terrible phrase, and I'm going to stop using it. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to put an elephant on the table and attack it here, but... But that was the best part. 
I hope Tree has better catchphrases. I hope Tree suffocates himself on his own scarf. <laughs> I hope Personally, I like this show for the comedy a lot and for the action scenes and then the characters. That's yeah. the order I'm going with because it's the order I said it. Yeah. So it's more spread out how I liked it. Five out of seven gay piano scenes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, the action scenes are really well done because with CG, like we said, it's like there's actually a camera so you can do real pans, real shots, and that makes it actually look good as an action think- scene. I think the CG was actually my favorite part of this. I think it would have... i do as far as say I think it would have looked worse if it was yeah. kind of hand-drawn than it would if it was CG. You just couldn't do the same things with the battle scenes. Yeah. You just couldn't do them. Yeah. But I hope all CG takes after this in the future. Yeah. It will... It definitely be... won't. It'll take after Berserk, probably. Lamp but, you know... That anime will finally die. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> CG will bring about our end. Thank God. Yeah, I mean, I really like the show. Uh, for the character development, for the characterization of the, char- of the characters, <laughs> that is good. Um, <laughs> the character development, the character characterization. Yeah, the world's pretty interesting eventually. The world characterization. Yeah, I'm a characters guy, and the characters characterize ca- ca- caricatures well. I definitely, my favorite part was definitely the CG, and then I liked the character design and the I thought yeah. the development was pretty cool, and it kind of... Yeah, when... I, I wish it was a bit more spread out from the beginning to the end, but yeah, the rapid development was fine as well. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, all in all, uh, yeah, pretty great. I liked it a lot. Good show, you should watch it. <laughs> yeah, uh, everybody watching this podcast... Yeah. <laughs> If you watched, you should have watched it before. This. If you watched to the end of the podcast, a you could have watched three episodes of the show by now. B you already have, or you wouldn't be watching this. So our recommendation also, is nothing. Also, C no one is watching this. Yeah, well, um, D frag. Got him. Yep. Nice. Hey, have you had any powdered milk recently? I have not. Okay, let's what? let's end before this. Let's get Snap. <laughs> Oh, Don't has your family tried that powdered milk? <laughs> oh, Don't has your family, family tried, tried that powdered milk? milk? I should actually just look at the lyrics. <laughs> Don't forget to brush your molars. That's probably all we have, I guess. Uh, this, this, this has been great. This has been fun, everybody. Uh, I, I have been Eric for this, for this previous hour. I've been Scott. For thank you, God damn it! Some out you. time. Why did that take so long? You've been Scott for as wanted, long as it took to I think. I wanted to leave you in the awkward silence. Oh boy. And I have been Brandon this past hour and the past twenty years. Wow, you got to rub that in, eh? Got to rub that into all of us only nineteen people, which is just yes. What's well, this? You know he's twenty three. No, he's older than that. He's in grad school. Has your school. family tried them powdered milk? School. Oh, has your family oh. tried them powdered milk? Well, if your family's tried them, then you know that you satisfied them, then the real head item powdered milk. And scene. <laughs>